Number 1. President Ferdinand Marcos was said to be descended from Lima Hong. Lima Hong, also known as Lima Hong, or Lin Tao Kien, was a Chinese pirate who invaded the northern islands of the Philippines and tried to seize the city of Manila from the Spanish in 1574. Some of Marcos's biographies say that it was the Evelyn side of the family that claimed to be descendants of Lima Hong. According to Lin T. White III in Philippine Politics, Possibilities and Problems in a Localist Democracy, it is said that President Marcos was the one who claimed to be Lima Hong's descendant, perhaps to please the local Chinese communities, or to associate himself with such a forceful ancestor. Number 2. Ferdinand Marcos was predicted to be an important man, even before he was born. In both his unofficial and official biographies, Marcos was said to be very superstitious, a trait he took after his grandmother, Emerenciana Q. Edrelin, who later passed on this trait to her daughter Josefa, and who in turn nurtured this in Marcos's upbringing. Emerenciana once got a prediction from a local card reader, that one of her grandsons would become Philippine president someday. Thus, when Ferdinand Marcos was born, Josefa named him after the famous architect of what is roughly now modern Spain, King Ferdinand, in order to prepare him for his destiny as Philippine president. Number 3. The Ederlins and Marcoses were members of the lower provincial elite in the northern province of Ilocos Norte. Marcos hailed from the lower provincial elite in the northern province of Ilocos Norte. His family members were landowners who had served as judges, mayors, and village heads, and both the Marcos and Edrelin families were educated and among the most prominent Filipinos of Ilocos Norte. Number 4. A Marcos was an assistant to the Spanish provincial judge in Lao in the mid-19th century. This is probably one of the reasons behind the rumors that a great-grandfather of Ferdinand Marcos was supposedly the illegitimate son of a Spanish judge. Nevertheless, this is one of the proofs of prominence of the family. Number 5. Allegations of illegitimacy appear in the Marcos family every few generations. Every generation or so, a member of the Marcos family is said to be an illegitimate child of some important man. This started with Ferdinand Marcos's great-grandfather, Damaso Marcos, who was rumored to be an illegitimate son of a Spanish provincial judge. This is mentioned by David Joel Steinberg in his book, The Philippines, A Singular and a Plural Place. In it, he mentions that the combined Chinese and Spanish roots of the Marcoses was a paradigm of the dominance of the mestizos, which benefited the Marcos family. He also mentions that there were unsubstantiated rumors that Ferdinand Marcos was, in fact, the illegitimate son of a Ferdinand Chua, the son of, of the major Chinese families in Ilocos. Author Sterling Seagrave claimed that the Chua family blocked the marriage, and instead encouraged Josefa to marry Mariano Marcos. Number 6. The Marcos family were educated by the Thomasites. The Thomasites were teachers sent by the American colonial masters to the Philippines to teach the native population. They were named after the ship, USS Thomas, which they arrived on. Fabian Marcos put all seven of his children under the instructions of the Thomasites. He may, in fact, have housed the first instructors in his own house until permanent quarters were found, for they had come to town at his request. Number 7. President Ferdinand Marcos and President Fidel Ramos were second cousins. The grandfather of Ferdinand Marcos, Fabian Marcos, was a fellow teacher of Fidel Ramos's grandfather, Hilario Valdez, before they became in-laws. This connection between the two families 
eventually led to the marriage between Hilario Valdez and Crispina Marcos, the sister of Fabian Marcos. This connection made Ferdinand Marcos a second cousin of Fidel Ramos. Number 8. Marcos claimed to be a cousin of the Lunas. Marcos was also very much influenced by his family's ties with the Luna brothers. Later during his presidency, he would always count himself as a descendant of the Lunas. The fame of the Luna brothers also forced Marcos to be larger than life, and thus he always saw himself in heroic terms, befitting a relative of the Lunas. The controversy of Juan Luna's murder of Paz Pardo de Tavera and her mother, and Luna's later humiliation and ridicule because of the affair, also contributed to Marcos's hatred towards the rich in Philippine society. Number 9. The Marcoses were Aglopayans. Fructuoso Edrelin was the most important man of his time in Serra. At the close of the 19th century, both Ederlin and Marcos families joined the Philippine Revolution and Ederlin was said to have fought under General Antonio Luna. At the start of the 20th century, they rallied behind Gregorio Aglipay, Bishop of the Revolution, in resisting American rule in the North. Not only did they fight with Aglipay, the family also converted to the Aglipayan Church. Ferdinand was baptized under the Aglipayan faith. This would later come up during the wedding of Marcos to Imelda Romualdez where Marcos had to be baptized hastily into the Catholic faith in order to marry Imelda. Number 10. The family name Marcos is the 285th most common surname in the Philippines. The Marcos surname, though not rare, is also not as common. It ranks as the 285th most common last name in the Philippines, and is found in 1,040 cities and municipalities in the Philippines, and carried by 34,586 people. Majority of people carrying the surname Marcos, are found in regions 1 to 4. In Ilocos, Laog has the largest concentration of Marcoses, although Quezon City holds the distinction of having the largest population of Marcoses in the Philippines. So that is it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching another episode.